Now let's run through how potential GDP grows. The aggregate production function is the relationship between labor and real GDP. So land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship actually produce real GDP. And the productivity of these factors is what determines the quantity of real GDP, the quality of land, sorry, the quantity of land, the quantity of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ability, and capital are fixed on any given day, but the quantity of labor employed is actually variable. So potential GDP is the level of real GDP when the quantity of labor employed is at the full employment quantity. The aggregate production function, um, all labor hours are not considered equally productive. So the first ones are considered more productive and the additional ones are marginally less productive. So for each additional hour of labor that uh, someone is, is providing, they're actually um, producing less and less real GDP. So an increase in the quantity of labor brings a movement along the production function and an increase in real GDP, but marginally less. Let's take a look at the aggregate labor market. So the aggregate labor market is this idea that there is only one large labor market that determines the quantity of labor employed and the quantity of real GDP produced. So the demand for labor is the relationship between the quantity of labor demanded and the real wage rate. The quantity of labor demanded is the number of hours hired by all the firms in the economy during a given time period. And this quantity demanded depends on the price of labor, which is the real wage rate. But what's the real wage rate? The real wage rate is calculated as the money wage rate divided by the price level. But its significance is that it shows us the quantity of goods and services that one hour of labor actually earns. The quantity of labor demanded increases as the real wage rate decreases because of the law of diminishing returns. And that was shown because of the production function. Firms will only hire more labor if the real wage rate falls to match the fall in extra output produced by that labor. The supply of labor is the relationship between the quantity of labor supplied and the real wage rate. The quantity of labor supplied is the number of hours that all the houses in the economy plan to work during a given time period. And the real wage rate influences the quantity of labor supplied because um, that it just determines what they can buy with their money. So they're going to work more if they can actually earn a greater real wage rate and buy more stuff. The quantity of labor supplied increase as the real wage rate increases for this reason. If we have a real wage rate that's above equilibrium position, then what happens is that we have a lot more, we have a greater quantity supplied than a quantity demanded of labor. And so price, the wage rate just gets bid down. There's downward pressure until we reach a point of equilibrium. And conversely, if the real wage rate is a lot lower, then the wage rate simply gets bid up because firms want to hire these people. And so we, that keeps happening until equilibrium is reached. Let's take a look at the potential GDP and the labor market. So full employment equilibrium actually determines the potential GDP because it determines the quantity of labor that is supplied and demanded. It determines how many hours an entire economy works. And so when we look at the labor market, we'll find an equilibrium. And from that equilibrium, we're going to be able to figure out how many labor hours the economy is working. We can take that same number and we can go down and we can look at the production function we can input that same amount of labor, that same quantity of labor, and we can just find the point on the production function at which that corresponds. And that's how we figure out what potential GDP is. Now, growth of the supply of the labor market actually makes the potential GDP grow. What happens is that we have a uh, shift to the right in the labor supply curve. And an increase in this supply curve increases the labor quantity at any given real wage rate. The quantity of labor can change as a result of the an increase in the uh, average number of hours uh, worked per worker. We could have an increase in the employment to population ratio, or we can have an increase in the working age population. Now the effects are as follows. The population growth increases the supply of labor, but the demand remains unchanged. There's no quantity or no change in the uh, quantity of real GDP at that given quantity of labor that can produce. So there's no actual change in the production function. Um, there's a movement along the production function. The real wage rate falls and the equilibrium quantity of labor increases. So what we have here is a greater amount of labor that's working and so we have a movement along the production function. Let's talk about a growth of labor productivity. So 
The quantity of real GDP produced by an hour of labor is what is known as labor productivity. When labor productivity increases, real GDP per capita and thus standards of living also actually increase. What happens when we have an increase in the labor productivity is that our production function actually shifts upwards. And what happens after that is that we actually have um, an increase in the real GDP per cap, or real GDP, um, the potential GDP um, that's indicated by the production function. But the labor market is still unchanged in the short run. But one of the determinants of demand for labor is actually an increase in productivity. And this increase in productivity has actually is going to, at least in the longer term, shift our labor demand curve outwards. And what happens is that we have a new equilibrium wage rate, we have a new equilibrium quantity of labor, and so it, there's a movement along the second production function. Let's clean this up a little bit. So the end result is that we actually have a movement upwards from the first position, uh, from production function one to production function two, when we have an increase in the uh, productivity of labor, but then we have a movement along the second productivity function when we have an increase in the labor demand.